Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the ninth video in the KQL Advanced series. In the last session, we covered working with IPs. In today's session, we'll learn how to use Evaluate Narrow and Materialize. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. In some data sets, you may have results that include many fields of interest. It can be challenging to make sense of these records horizontally because of the need to scroll left and right to view everything. In some cases, it may make more sense to view the data vertically. While it's easy to click on each record to extend it vertically and click on JSON objects to view them more easily, you may have a use case where you want the output to be displayed vertically. One use case may be for placing query results into security case notes. A vertical formatting is likely to be more readable. In this case, we can use Evaluate Narrow to help us. Today we're working in a free log analytics workspace. Instructions on how to access this free data set are found in Lesson 7 of the Beginner Series. As we take a sample of sign-in logs, we can see many different fields of interest. But scrolling through them all left to right doesn't present well. As we narrow it down to a single record of interest using argmax, our goal is to capture this information in the best way for case notes. Using evaluate with a narrow function places each column as its own record in a key value pair format. This may be what we need already, but we can make this data even more presentable by removing the initial field full of zeros and adding a colon after the column values. As we scroll down the output, we see many empty fields, so we can remove those as well. We also see several fields with only brackets, so we can also remove those. When we export this data, this may be a more readable view for pasting in case management systems than a single record. And if any of the JSON objects are too lengthy, we can either unpack the entire JSON or extract key fields before completing the evaluate narrow line. Sometimes when we write complex KQL queries, we need to call on the same data set multiple times. If a data set logs a high volume of records, there may be additional records added from the first pool to the second pool, which can lead to data errors. Pulling the same data set twice when not needed also requires additional resources and increases the likelihood of the query timing out, depending on the size of the data and the system used to query the data. Instead of calling the same data set multiple times, we can pull the data once and save it in a temporary state, then call the same saved data set again later in the query. In this case, we can use the materialize function to save our data set that we plan to reuse. We can create a variable for our saved subquery in this general format. The subquery portion represents any query that you'd like to save as a temporary output table. In this use case, Let's first create a query that we'll use as our snapshot. In this example, we want to take a snapshot of all sign-ins in the last week. We made changes in our environment several weeks ago, and we want to look for applications and resources no longer having authentication attempts or success. If we had to call this data more than once, it's possible new sign-in records could have been logged skewing the results.
when we run our subquery, we see it gives us a snapshot of sign-in activity in the last week. We can now place this query we want to use in our materialize function. There are many stylistic choices here to make the code more readable. One option you may see is having the initial function parentheses on one line, indenting the subquery, and placing the closing parentheses and semicolon on the far left, so it can be more easily identified as the end of the subquery. This is personal preference, however, and it's not required for the subquery to work properly. Placing the closing parentheses and the semicolon on the same line is also common. We can now write the rest of the query and refer back to the saved snapshot as needed multiple times without additional records being written. In this case, we can create three variables, one for result type, one for app display name, and one for resource display name. We can then extend some new fields that provide a true false value whether or not the apps, resources, or error codes are in our data snapshot. If the value is true, then the apps or resources were seen in the baseline period, but were not seen in the last week. But we could easily reverse this query and identify new apps and resources that are being used in the last week that were not used in the baseline period. When we use Materialize, keep in mind that there's a maximum cache of 5 gigabytes of data. So if you're working with large data sets, you may need to rewrite your query using different strategies like Distinct or ArgMax. If we were working with a large data set, in this use case, we could further optimize the query by taking out the time generated field and changing project to distinct to narrow down the initial snapshot results to only unique values. Another good use case for materialize is unioning two tables together. You might want to take a snapshot of a table, then run multiple different calculations on the same data to see the different outputs, then union the data back together. Materialize is great for these types of use cases, but keep in mind that using Materialize when it's not needed may actually use more resources than not using it at all. That's it for today's session on Evaluate Narrow and Materialize. In the next session, we'll discuss functions. For homework, use the sign in logs table from the free data sets at aka.ms slash LA demo. Build a query that shows all successful authentications to the Microsoft Power BI application in the last seven days. And it also shows all unsuccessful logins to Visual Studio Code 
from 7 to 14 days ago in the same output data set. Post your solution query in the comments to learn with and help others. See you in the next session. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.